Okay, I have six o'clock now, so we will convene this uh, special meeting of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District uh, Board on January 30th at 6 p.m. Um, could we have a roll call? Director Hammer. Present. Director Smallman. Here. President Bachman. Here. Director Ratcliffe. Here. Director Bruce. Here. Do we have any additions or deletions? Staff has none. Okay. Um, we will now enter into the portion of this meeting for oral communications on any item that is not on tonight's agenda. Um, would anybody like to speak? Just real briefly about Boulder, Boulder Creek. Um, if I look at the agenda item, this is kind of a pet peeve. Um, it says this portion of the agenda is reserved for oral communications by the public for items which are on the agenda. And I would imagine, I went back and looked at a couple of agendas. This seems to be something that the board and the president has missed over the last few. Is that correct? Is it are or are not? This is for the portion. Are not. Special meeting that is on the This is? Are on the agenda, not are not on the agenda. Are on the agenda. Are on the agenda. Okay. Okay, this is a little. are not, and I wasn't sure which. Right. I um I was under the impression that, um, there was no need to have it for, okay, because each item has its own uh, agendization. Um, so will we be able to comment on the agenda item? When it oh, comes absolutely. To yes, you'll get, multi you'll get plenty of comments um, at you. that time. The clarification. So unless, um, having offered it, unless somebody had a strong opinion, why don't we, okay. Is the Viera letter part of the agenda? Shall be available for public inspection. Intentional violations of the Brown Act are misdemeanors. Anybody who attends a closed meeting discussing information which is to be available to the public is creating, is committing a crime. Okay, okay thank you. Any, okay. Um, anybody, okay. Ms. Well, Henry. I want to be clear here so I can talk about something Anything I want right now, and I can talk later. Or do I get to only talk once? No, you will um, go ahead and speak on something that is not on the agenda. <laughs> okay. In 2014, the last act of the previous board was to hire Brian Lee. Now, I don't know why he was hired. He had been an interim manager, but basically he's an engineer. Um, was it because of the, all the lawsuits they were having at Marina Coast? I don't know. I'm just wondering. The other thing that I looked at was the 460 form that Eric Hammer and Jim Radcliffe filed, and Terry Vieira gave them a $500 donation for um, their run for the board. Now I'm thinking possibly that that could be a, a, a conflict of interest. They went into their very first meeting, voted to fund the Terry Vieira um, uh, defense, I can think of the word, <laughs> defense, and they, to me, they should have said, well, just in case there's a problem, we did receive $500 from Terry Vieira. That's what you do if there's a possible conflict of interest. But that wasn't done. And I'm wondering, was this a conflict of interest? $500. I've had some dealing with the fair political practices they don't like you getting money for anything that's questionable if it's conflict of interest. So I, that's one of the things that I'm concerned about and wonder why it was never brought up. There was a different attorney. Maybe he wasn't very good. And I also couldn't understand why they didn't realize that Thierry Vieira had a conflict of interest. I was on a board. You take 
ethics training every two years. One of the very first things is real estate deals. And your mother, your brother, your father, your wife can't be involved in that. You can't say, oh well, my wife was a listing agent. You can't. So I don't understand what kind of training this board had about conflict of interest, about ethics. And I'm hoping they get some better training. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, would anybody else like to speak at this point? Okay. Seeing none, I'll close out general orals on this then, and we'll move on to um, our single new business item. Um, and that is, um, and I'll read it from the agenda, um, unless there's any informational response that, okay, staff would like to, maybe I'm seeing none. Um, <coughs> This item is a potential lawsuit for injunction to prevent future unauthorized disclosures of the district's confidential and legally protected information. Receive and consider by the board public comment before deciding whether to proceed with filing a lawsuit for an injunction or other court order to prevent future unauthorized disclosures of the district's confidential and legally protected information. So I'll um, ask for staff. Okay. Um, okay, to lead this off. So the board requested that the district's legal counsel prepare the memo that is attached to the board meeting tonight, um, along with the draft injunction. And hopefully everybody's had a chance to read that. Um, I'd like to turn it over to Gina Nichols, district's legal counsel now, for any further comment. Okay. Um, thank you, President Baldwin, uh, district manager Lee. I recommended to uh, the district's board to place this on the open se session agenda. Um, prior to making a decision whether or not to proceed with filing a complaint against Director Smallman. Um, I, there, currently, there's, not on the, there's no requirement that the board have any discussion or make a decision tonight. That's up to the board in its discretion. I do want to caution the board that um, the scope of this agenda item is on the merits of whether or not to file the injunction. It doesn't extend to a discussion of what was previously discussed in closed session. And if uh, board members start to accidentally uh, regurgitate or talk about what was talked about in closed session, I will interject to try to steer the conversation away from that um, confidential information. Okay. Um, at this point, I just want to let people know the general layout of uh taking public input tonight. I, uh, we have a single item on this agenda. Um, there should be ample time for everybody to speak and comment as they uh, feel they would like to. So um, I'd like for any directors first to be able to um, have a brief comment, um, something on the order of one to three minutes. Eat, everybody speak um, once in this, um, this session and then go to the public. Um, so you get a little bit of um, information from maybe where we're at. And then um, we'll go to the pub. Could I ask maybe how many people are interested in speaking? Okay, tonight, if you would raise your hand. It depends on what you say. It, it will. <laughs> it will. But 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 the only reason for asking this question is is to. I mean, this seems like a reasonable okay uh, reasonable number in three minutes is uh, okay certainly okay well within the ability of us to do. So um, I'll take public comment for three minutes and then bring the discussion back to the board um, for a discussion and then go back to the public again. I want to go back so that after you've heard our more thorough okay, um, thoughts about the matter and our responses perhaps to some of uh, what your initial comments were, we can go back and get a, a second thought okay, from you and then come back uh, to the directors for the final time in which we will consider how we um, deal with the evening, you know, how we proceed or not proceed, or everybody, okay, go forth. So, um, would any of the directors like to say anything at this point, or about what thoughts are about where we are and why we're here? Sure. If you're looking at me like maybe I'm, we're going to start from the left and work it, it doesn't matter to me. I will look at both sides. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. My experience 
in perception is that in closed session there were clear admonitions from counsel about what was confidential and privileged. There was no question in my mind about what should be maintained in privacy for the good of the district to ensure our customers' interests were protected. When Mr. Smallman went to the media, to the press banner, and was interviewed and quoted in the media in violation of that admonition to maintain privacy and confidentiality, I felt that that was done not in error, but with intent, not out of innocence or misunderstanding, but with intent. And I felt concerned that his behavior cast a shadow of mistrust and doubt amongst the board that needs to work together to responsibly steward the resources of this district for our customers. Okay. Thank you. I will leave it at that. Okay. Anybody? Well, the, one thing about this meeting, um, I'm, you know, I think it's really a shame that that we have um, reached the point where this has been sort of our only recourse. Um, I'm I'm really uh, disappointed and disturbed that that we um, have had to go as far as we have, but I do think that this is the best forum. Um, for this very special kind of, of discussion to be explained and understood by the members of the public. And I think that's going to be a really important part of tonight's meeting. Um, so I think this is an opportunity. I'm glad that we'll have time for people to have two rounds of, of, of comments because I think that will be useful. It's, um, and I'm, I appreciate the fact that our legal counsel is going to be leading this because it is a, a specialized and complex topic. There's a lot of history here. and. Um, that's basically it. I'm going to be interested to see what questions come up and hopefully clarify this sort of very specialized little backwater of, of the Brown Act and its procedures for the, for the members of the public. I'm going to skip myself um, and ask either of you if uh, you want to comment at this point. Go ahead. Okay. Um, <coughs> The difficulty of tonight and the difficulty of speaking on this agenda topic is the fact that the majority of it and the reason behind it took place and still takes place in closed session, which makes trying to communicate clear enough to the general public why we're here today. Um, because my understanding will be is a lot of the examples and conversation that took place, really we can't talk about out here. And that makes me really uncomfortable because it, it, it doesn't allow us to really provide a clear storyline of the incidents that have happened and what we've tried to do to not get to this place to start with. So that's my biggest concern. Um, my second concern is the fact that the Brown Act is there to really protect everybody, uh, board members, ratepayers, consumers in, within the district. And one of the things that we as board members need to be able to do is go into closed session, discuss legal strategy, whether it be for or against something that the general public may be for or against, and know that we can strategize. Because one day we might be strategizing something that everybody in this room is totally for the next time we might be strategizing for something that everybody in this room is against. And then the, the safety is taken away from us to be able to do our business because it ends up on the front page of a tabloid. It's really hard. Um, and we have spent countless hours trying to find a way to be able to conduct the business of the district that's going to best benefit majority of the big areas of the district. And right now we're handcuffed. Um, and there's you know a couple of suits out there that we're currently in that, that have been on the agenda a lot and it makes it really difficult to have open conversations about it. And there's those that are yet to come that we all know will come. And 
um, finding a way to be able to really conduct business that protects this district and also protects its finances um, is really what I'm concerned about. Um, and I'm very interested in hearing some of the, the public's take on it, and I'm interested in further board discussion on where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. And um, what I'm not interested in and is looking at any type of punitive damage stuff. I mean, I'm here today to try and stop that from happening, trying to find a way that we can solve the issue at hand um, and try to stop it from happening, especially the things like blatant <coughs> violations of the Brown Act uh, and have been proven to us and shown to us by our council uh, that they're, they're clear Brown Act violations. I mean, that's, I think, a good way to sum it up for me. No, you want to know. Oh, <laughs> sure. Those that you have known me, I, I've recently lost my job and um, recently divorced. Um, and actually, my father told me I was pretty stupid to stay on the, serve on the water district board. So it kind of hurt. I mean, after, you know, all the time that I served on Lompico Pico in 2008 and, um, you know, since then for nine years, um, you know, I'm pretty proud of what we've accomplished. Um, uh, you're not going to find anybody more talented and willing it to, um, to help rebuild this water district. Um, I also respect the law as much as I can. I mean, I, you know, we take those ethics courses, and I take it. I, you know, I take them very seriously, and, and I cannot support. I'm here to say that I don't feel that I've done anything wrong. Uh, you know, I've, um, you know, I can't support <coughs> not following the law, the rule of the law, some of the basic laws that we learn from. We, that we have to take a course on ethics and. Etc. So, I feel that I've done nothing, absolutely nothing wrong. Um, and our primary obligation: this is not a large water district, and I can see that. You know, I know people. You know, this is a water district that, that is Long Pico. I don't want to see it have the same thing that happened with this water district as would happen with with Long Pico. And as a project manager for a construction company, we are very, you know, when we do. Uh, construction projects, we are very aggressive on not going over budget. Okay, we you know any extra costs, we're very aggressive. I I just feel this this is you know I feel that the, these legal expenses is is it's caused great division in this community. Okay, it's time to fill it to 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 get rid of that division, to start making smart, you know, that that's what I feel that. It, our primary obligation on this water district is to be fiscal, fiscally um, responsible and to spend to, to, to get your infrastructure rebuilt the most effective possibly. And I feel that this the, these legal sideshows they're not serving us any 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 well at all. You know they're dividing the community and they're 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 throwing your hard earned money down down the toilet. Okay, they're not gonna this, this isn't gonna do anything. Period. Okay, this is just a complete waste of money. The the information that I disclose <coughs> is very trivial. Everybody knew everybody knew that Terry Vieira was going to sue this water district, and it was very trivial information that why I'm getting attacked by this. Y you know what? I'm here to help. Okay, and if you want if you want me out of here, let me know. Um, I have a large level of frustration with this, I think maybe some of the other directors do, because I recognize the proper function of being able to conduct some matters um, outside of public view. I mean, one of the classics is doing real estate deals, okay, that you, for you cannot talk about price and terms. Um, but legal, ma and that may come up, we may need to 
do that at some point in the time as we deal with our facilities issues. And in those instances, I would certainly want to feel that nothing would ever come out of closed session about that. But regarding the more recent ones, um, the, the way in which legal matters proceed, okay, are such that to level the ground between plaintiffs and defendants in some way, both parties, okay, uh, go about their calculations among themselves and bring their issues together in, okay, a legal arena at some place. There, the, and in order for, for both plaintiffs and defendants to be on level ground, the, a district such as ours, regardless of whether it's a plaintiff or a defendant, needs to be able to think about its matters and come to a way of getting to, um, okay, you know, the, the situation on which they um, are competing, you know, in, in bringing their case equally along with the other side. And it, um, in this realm in which we've been in, I haven't felt like um, we have had the confidence of being able to do that. And um, I want to have that going forward. Um, whether And what's gone on in the past for me is not of the prime importance. It is getting to a position that going forward that we can go into a, a meeting and discuss whatever is proper to discuss in closed session, and certainly legal, um, with the confidence that one of the five members, or any number of the five members, okay, cannot override the combined thought process and uh, deliberative action to come to the proper way forward. And we're in a position now that I don't feel like we can do that without fear that something we say among ourselves is going to go outside the arena in which it is allowed and affect the process going forward. So um, at this point, I'd like to take public um, input on this. And if anybody would like to speak, um, I saw John's hand go up first, so and I'll come to Deborah. So I wanted to say that uh, that I, I believe that this is a smear job on Bill, that if that this board has been trying to smear Bill since the day he got elected, that by not allowing him to be included in engineering meetings with him where his specialty was, uh, where any time any time that he voted any other way than everyone else, Margaret made it clear that her expectations were that everybody would vote together and that there would be no independence. There would be no independent thinking. I rather resent uh, Director Radcliffe's use of the word backwater a moment ago because, of course, that's the way that this board views Lon Pico and a director from Lon Pico. It was perfectly clear, uh, perfectly clear that this board has been, has looked down at Lon Pico. Uh, this board has been attacking Bill from the beginning, not allowing him to go to a committee meeting just because your director has you all running around, being led around by nose rings. Also, I want to just make one other point that you're talking about legal advice. This company's legal advice is why we're here tonight. That's why the lawsuits, because of lousy legal advice that this board and your manager went forward on. Ms. Lowen. Me? Yes. Hi. Deborah Lowen, Lompico. I'm here in support of Bill Smallman. Bill Smallman is a decent, genuine man of integrity. His professional qualifications and experience on a water board surpassed any other directors here. His lack of guile stands out and makes him a target. He's the only board member here that serves the ratepayers directly every time. It is my belief that this is an inappropriate charge. It is a misuse of district funds and is meant just to intimidate. I believe a lot of this is very personal by several directors and the district manager, and I think that needs to be gotten under control. 
I believe there's an element of retaliation. You lost the Vieira case and you're angry, including Mr. Holloway's claims. I think it's a retaliation, I agree with John, against Lompico, and I believe that's inappropriate. I looked into this and I read that not all closed session communication is confidential. And it's not all protected. And in my research, I found, for example, uh, a couple of news articles. One was Randall Brown talking about what was discussed in a closed session. And one was the general manager, Brian Lee, talking about what was discussed in a closed session. I learned that not all attorney communication falls under the client attorney privilege. Press Banner printed uh, an opinion from an open government lawyer who said that um, he felt that that letter was not privileged. So there's a question. This stuff, it, it, to me it appears that Director Smallman's opinion is protected. And like he says, I believe it falls very general knowledge. We came in in June of 2016 and already at that time there was plenty of rumors that Mr. Vieira was planning to sue the district unless they paid for his defense. I don't know where that came from. That's just been out there on the street. Uh, the existing facts and circumstances are that I see a pattern of abuse and prejudice against Director Smallman. I put together a timeline of events in the news and I don't think that all of this information fits that I see in the claim. But I believe the attorney has not been given all of the correct facts in history. Uh, she wasn't here until July 1st, so a lot of this occurred. Most of this occurred before she was here, and so she has to rely on hearsay and board member testimony. Um, when she was interviewed, she said this kind of stuff was not her area of expertise. And as to questions on what legal advice she would be giving the board, she said her duty is to take whatever legal path the board decides. In other words, that's saying, She's got to support you no matter how bad your judgment. Um, she said she did not want to get embroiled in the politics behind the scenes. I believe the Nossaman firm is being dragged into the mud. And I'm going to add to that Valley Women's Club. Thank you. So anybody else? Does anybody else want to comment? Mr. Lee. Yes, sir. Hi. Good evening. Uh, I'm Mark Lee from Ben Loman. I have a couple of comments on the uh, item that's before us. Uh, my question and comments are, if anyone have requested records of the letters to the board over the last year, would Mr. Vieira's letter would have been withheld as non-disclosable under the Public Records Act, PRA? What answer would the board or district manager defend if that information is more damaging to be disclosed than to be revealed to the public ratepayer's interest? That's the first question. If so, what new information would be revealed by Mr. Vieira's letter that is, already, that is not already known by the district ratepayers and the public? The litigation papers filed in the case uh, that was already litigated would have already been a matter of Superior Court public record. Furthermore, from news coverage that's well known in this matter, the SLBWD district defending and paying for Mr. Vieira is well known already by the public. So what confidentiality <coughs> is being harmed here? Mr. Small, in my opinion, was doing his duty in defending the principle of the Brown Act viz. open, transparent government. I don't see any wrong going here. I think uh, this, current case, this current item that's on the agenda is going down the wrong path and damaging to the public and causing further friction among the ratepayers. And will obviously be, uh, will be become evident in the next election. So please, Let's uh, discard this frivolous uh, lawsuit by the district. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Would anybody else like to speak? Um, you and then I'll go to the gentleman there. Okay. okay. I'm Bill Hoffman, Ben Loman. And uh, I just have some questions. Uh, the first one would be for Jean Radcliffe. I don't understand why this is the only recourse. That's what you said. 
it's the only recourse. It seems like there should, should be some other considerations other than an injunction and uh, creating all of the, you know, the harm uh, and the feelings between the ratepayers and the board and the board members themselves. Uh, if there are not any other recourses? We'll respond once all the public comments, okay. so we'll get back to you on that. Um, as a, a new person in this district, I've, we've only been here seven years, and I first came here, I was somewhat shocked at the $50 fee for no water, and then the additional fees on top of that, uh, having been used to San Jose rates, uh, which were quite a bit less. And, um, and then a, a rate increase came across for 33%, something like that. And uh, I got the letter, and I didn't respond. I, didn't, I said, I don't need to do that, because I know the rate payers here aren't going to put up with a 33% increase. Um, well, we got a 33% increase, and then we found out that this was going to be another increase, a 65%. That's when I got involved. And what I found as a, a new member of the community and a rate payer for the district is that there's a tremendous amount of resentment, resentment and uh, disconnect between ratepayers and the board. And I don't think that needs to be true. It shouldn't happen. Other districts, you know, we've, I've visited, don't seem to have that kind of problem. And I think it's coming from the board and maybe some staff members. And I don't understand it. But it's very deeply rooted, and it's going to be very difficult to change it unless you start communicating. And what I don't <coughs> see is any transparency whatsoever. And I think the only attempt at transparency, communicating with public, <coughs> is through Bill Smallman. And I'm very disappointed as a ratepayer to be in, in a member to all this embroilment and, and discourse. Um, the other thing I'm wondering is how much has been spent on legal fees already with respect to this case? It, it, was there money spent on investigating the legality of it, whether or not it's feasible to do this? Those are my questions. Thank you. Um, I think I saw Bruce raise his hand. Are you? Okay. Yeah, I'm Bruce Holloway from Boulder Creek. See, um, I think this is a, a gross waste of, uh, of, of public funds to pursue this. Um, if you want to talk about Brown Act violations, I think the list is far longer on your side. Uh, I'm not going to try to defend uh, leaks out of, out of, out of, you know, out of uh, closed session. But um, what I read in the paper. Uh, you know, I read the uh, I read the draft complaint, and as far as I could tell, the uh, there were three three separate instances that were named there. Uh, the third, I'll tell you, uh, it said that uh, Director Smallman said Gina said some boilerplate about keeping things confidential uh, in closed session and uh, grand jury proceedings. That's boilerplate. I don't see any confidential information whatsoever that was disclosed there. Um, the only thing that I guess you're saying is confidential is that Bill said, Gina said, or something like that. Um, as far as the other two, uh, the first one that was in the paper, as, as I understand it, was uh, retrospective. Uh, sometime around August, uh, something, uh, there was some information about what happened in April. Uh, we already knew in April that there was a Vieira letter because uh, ex-president Ratcliffe told us that. So that was the first I knew that there was a Vieira letter and we already knew that as of April 3rd. Uh, I don't know, you know, whatever uh, Director Smallman might have added to that. The other thing, the other thing was prospective. So that was that uh, Terry Vieira was threatening to sue the Water District and ultimately that came out uh, in a letter from Whitworth and Parkin that, uh, that was revealed to the public that Terry did make uh, uh, some sort of a threat that he, he, he expected the district to pay his judgment. Um, so from my point of view, I guess, I guess 
both of these uh, both of these disclosures, uh, Director Smallman was advising the public of illegality by the board. The the first one, you know, if the Vieira letter is a public record, it should have been disclosed to the public in 2014. And uh, you know, I haven't seen it, so I don't know enough about it to be able to say whether or not it's a public record. But it sure seems like a public record to me. Um, and the second thing about um, if Vieira was suing the district, uh, when you discuss Holloway versus Vieira, if Terry Vieira was threatening to sue the district, that is not a topic under the Brown Act. Uh, when you caption something as Holloway versus Vieira, that is not enough. Uh, you may have uh, been repeatedly discussing items in closed session without captioning them properly, and it may be that uh, Director Smallman was the whistleblower. Uh, and, and, and he's within his free, spe free speech rights to say that what you did behind closed doors was illegal. I'd like a little bit more. Um, no, I'll look, there, there's another time after this. Yes, that I'll you, say it in writing, maybe. Okay. Um, Lois? Um. Well, I wrote this all out before I came, and I'm going to be repeating a lot of what other people have been saying. Director Smallman has been bullied and treated as a pariah from day one. Those attending meetings have seen this time after time. And it's been mentioned, even though Bill is an engineer who worked on water projects and could not attend committee meetings during the day all committee meetings for the engineering were held when Bill couldn't be there. Any normal, considerate board would make time for a board member who works. And I've known a number of water districts, and they have people who work and they have meetings at night for committees. They have meetings on the weekend. But here they could only be at 10 o'clock in the morning or some ridiculous time. I want to repeat some things that were reported, closed session actions that were reported in open session. January 24th, 17, the board authorized a motion for a new trial in the Vieira case. Four to one, Smallman opposed. March 22nd, 17, director, man <laughs> director uh, district manager was given a satisfactory evaluation. Four to one, Smallman opposed. I can't help but wonder if board members pressured and bullied Smallman trying to get him to vote their way in closed session because they want unanimous votes. But Bill is stubborn. Believe me, I know. He didn't cave. And he didn't give in. But if they, and I have no way of knowing, only you guys know, try to pressure him, bully him into voting the way they wanted, they broke the law. On April 3rd, the board voted unanimously, yay, to stop all financial commitment to the Vieira case. President Ratcliffe also mentioned a letter from Vieira had been received. Why did she mention it? If we can't know about it, and I didn't talk three minutes, um, and if they didn't, de uh, they said they had to defend Terry Vieira because he was an employee. Does that mean Bill Smallman's an employee? Mm -hmm. They had to defend Terry Vieira because if they didn't, only the rich would run for the board. Really? So you're going after Bill Smallman, you're talking about him making him pay, which I don't think you can do, but that... I know. What, what you're being hypocritical. 
We, we shut down. It might, the, the three minutes wasn't up. I hadn't talked that long. I'm just, I just want to say, if we're going to be fair, you know, Mr. Holloway wasn't given any excess time. If we're going to stay that way, we need to sit that way across the board. To the best it, of our ability. I agree with you, Eric, and if the public can respect that, I, that will make my job easier if you um, don't make me um, try to get you to quit talking. There will be another time. If you, if you have further thoughts on this matter, we're going to come back to everybody another time. So please, uh, if you can, at least wait till that time. Mr. Fultz. Uh, Bob Fultz, Boulder Creek. So, um, you know, when I first heard about this, it just sort of seemed like a, a little bit of day job, you know, another day, another lawsuit and another amount of money that we're going to spend. So I really want to make sure I understand what it is that's, that's trying to be done here. It seems like, when I read the complaint, that the board is trying to establish that there's a pattern of behavior here because I think typically injunctions are for instant behavior, not retrospective, or pro prohibiting something that's going on in the moment. So it's like we're trying to create this pattern of behavior that's over some very long period of time. Um, Mr. Holloway talked about the two incidents last year in August and early September, late August. And then there's other information here. I wanted to make sure I understood what you guys are trying to get at. Upon information and belief, Director Small has made other unauthorized and unlawful disclosures of district confidential information. Is that documented somewhere, or is that just... Um, almost like hearsay because it's it's on belief. I mean, someone raising their right hand and saying, yep, this has happened and here's what it is, chapter and verse. There's another line down here, at other dates and times using social media, such as Facebook, establish a pattern. I would think it was on social media, it would be in here in his exhibit. Is that also a, a factual thing or is that more of a belief? And then the full extent of Director Smallman's unauthorized disclosures of the district's confidential or privileged information is unknown to the district and may be extensive. Well, I mean, you could say that about any director, that you really don't know what they're doing. Is this, again, more hearsay, or is this trying to do a pattern of behavior to try to get that injunction? And with all that in there, what are the odds, really, of, of winning this, extracting money from Director Smallman? I mean, from a business point of view, just what's the dollars and cents? Let's say that you really have a good case. Is there something here that you're really going to get that you don't already have? That is, there's no specific infraction that has a specific date and quote since last September. So. I'm not sure what it is you guys are going at. Hopefully you might be able to help and enlighten us by giving us some of those other examples we're talking about. And then finally, when we get to the court process, is it a closed session hearing with the judge so that you can talk about all these disclosures that Director Smallman has done that the public is excluded from? I mean, is that how it works? Or do you actually have to go through a public process of disclosing all the information that supposedly he's violated? Uh, you know, because usually trials are not closed session. Those are sort of like different kinds of trials, star chamber type of trials. So I'm trying to understand what it is you guys are really going to get to procedurally here. Whatever it is, it's a big waste of money. Um, Bill, please. After we're done with public comment, it'll come back to the board. Um, any other public comment? Mr. Pasolas. John Pasolas, I live in Felton. Uh, it seems that it seems to me that the board started having a lot of trouble back when they tried to raise the rates about <laughs> six years ago. And a group of people formed, they called themselves the watchdogs, and they started to scrutinize every record that the board had for years back to try to find anything they could to pin on the board. And then at some point in the law, a group of people seemed to find some way to trump up some sort of grand jury thing. So then they got the grand jury to look at it because they trumped up stuff. And I noticed in the meetings that they were directing questions that could be used to prompt the board. And then the Lompico thing. So now we've taken in Lompico, but there's a lot of sour grapes there. Um, Lompico didn't really want to give up being autonomous. They, I, as far as I can tell from the, So we have a lot of people who aren't here, OK? Thousands. We have these like three groups of people who show up 
who continuously give the board a bad time. Um, I would like to see Mr. Small play nice in the, in, in the confidential meetings. I would like to see everybody, you know, run the board. When you have this sitting on the other side of the aisle from you, it is definitely, everybody's trying to find anything that you say they can trip you up with. They're all just sitting here writing notes that trip you up on something. And I know these legal things have gotten a little out of hand, and it's time to rein them in. I don't see the sense in... Um, in the injunction, I think that there's violations of the Brown Act. Aren't there state attorneys who may take an interest in it? And you won't have anything to say about it. So that's always a possibility. And the more this gets going, the more likely the state may decide to take a look at it. So I would think that you guys need to learn to run the board the way it's supposed to, having the confidentiality for the things you need to, and I get the feeling that a lot of this pressure should start to die off, because it all started with those rate increases six years ago, seven years ago, and then each time there's some kind of thing, like there was all that trouble <laughs> about the water pump down there out on the Olympia, you know, which ended up being built anyway. It's, they're all a bunch of people who just get angry about one thing, and they're they're determined. They are very determined, and you can't blame them, I guess, when people are determined. But let's face it: the majority of the people who you serve aren't here because they think you're doing a fine job. Um. Uh. My name is Nancy Gerd, I'm from Felton, and um, 10 years ago, um, you guys bought our water system in uh, Felton, and um, I remember that day because we were ecstatic that we finally got out from under the thumb of Cal-Am, and if we hadn't, our rates would be twice what they are today, and they'd probably be bottling our water and selling it who knows where. Um, so it's interesting. I mean, people end up on, on different sides because of their position. For me and for a lot of people in Felton, we are eternally grateful that we are part of a public utility commission board um, outfit. It's, it's like I, I'm grateful for it many times during the year, just thinking about it. So. Um, even though the rates are increasing, it's something that I'm not surprised by, that I do kind of expect because we have many miles of pipes and pumps in this water system, and it takes a lot to run it. And um, so I'm sad that there's so much discord on the board. I know how stressful it is for everybody, including people you know, who are in the audience here. And I guess my hope is that people can find their way through it in a, um, in a manner that um, will make everyone, at least if not totally happy, somewhat give them something people can live with um, down the line. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody else from the public would like to speak? Um, and then I'll go to the Barbara Hanson, Felton. I also come from Felton. Love, love, love you guys. Love that I don't have to go to Germany to be angry at someone. <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> this is much better. And those miles and miles of pipes go up and down and through rivers and over streams and through all kinds of hills. I've realized it's got to be expensive. We've done the best we can. And I. I so feel so bad for the board that you can't defend yourselves. Um, the public can say whatever they want, whenever they want, and the board has to sit there and zip their mouth, and I hate that. But that's how it is, and I'm hoping that the story, the true story comes out, and people start realizing we're in a very small community, 
We know how hard it was to get here tonight. Highway 9 was a parking lot. That's the way the emergency people have to come in. We have to work together, folks. Thank you. Lewis. I have a question, respectfully. I'd like to ask the board members what they've done to help guide, train, or warn Bill about his behavior. Last month we heard several of the board members talk about going to a conference in Monterey to attend a teamwork session. To me, a team supports and defends each other, first and foremost. And I would just like to know what you have done in support of Bill in this regard. And if the answer is yes, I would like to see the evidence, the documented evidence of that under FOI, so I can read it and digest it. I see the rest of my time back. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, any other public comment? Sir. Uh, Glenn, <coughs> Glenn Lyons from Felton. Uh, I wanted to echo the support comments. We remember how hard we fought to become a part of you guys and how ecstatic we were when that happened. And uh, for our newcomer, you would have seen water rates that you wouldn't believe. It's more expensive to have water here. We have, you know, we have a huge district. I mean, it, it's just different, you know. And, and this is maybe a little abstract, but, but I feel like some of, you know, and I used to come to all these meetings, and then I don't have to do that anymore, I thought. And this is the first time I've showed up in a long time. Uh, but I've been hearing... It feels, and this may be seem out of left field and a little abstract, it may be even wrong, but it feels like some of the attack on the board is part of that larger picture in this, in this country of people who just don't trust government. And so there echoes what John said. They're out to, you know, I didn't follow the Terry Fierra case and the merits or, or, or whatever, but if Bruce Holloway hadn't done anything, would we all, you know, yeah. principal or not, would we all be in a much better place? My guess is we would be, which isn't, and again, I don't know the details of that, so, and so I'm not even saying anything about the right or wrong of that. but. I think we need to to work at trusting each other. We need to work at it in this country, and we need to work on it in this community. Thank you. So, I'm Bill Kennedy from that moment, and uh, respectfully, I just have to weigh in on your um, comment about the Terry era letter, where you uh, admitted that you didn't really know in I do. It. Um, okay. Well, tell us about it, and he'll hear what you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just tell us about what uh, your okay, response well, I, to him. Not you to know okay. what you're talking about. In other words, to say just outright that there's this this um, blanket condemnation of the board's uh, behavior, and that um, it's because of some vague issue, uh, the Vieira matter, that may or may not matter, and that we should just let that go. I'm sorry, that shouldn't just be let go, let gone. Um, and the point is. Um, Ignorance is bliss, and again, respectfully, if you if you don't know about something, it's just like, well, it didn't happen. It doesn't matter. But it did happen, and it does matter. And it's a uh, it's a big deal. I think and it still is a big deal, and it's not resolved. And uh, I think that um, to in the future, as it becomes farther and farther in the past, people will step in and say, oh, that happened, you know, way back then. It doesn't matter anymore. Um, it still matters until it's resolved. And to say that the um, condemnation of the board results from just a general unhappiness with government is not true. It results from people that do know the facts and have followed the issue, frankly. And sorry, but that's... If I could speak of it again, I don't know more. You, 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 you don't definitely know more just by, by osmosis, but it's a big deal. <laughs> okay, thank you. Other input? I, um, well, I'll, I'll close out the world and then I'll give, I'll, we'll come back to the board here. Any other public in, input from the uh, visitors tonight? Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll come back to the 
the board and we'll have some discussion and we'll come back to you. Okay. Can I go first and just address a question that was directed at me by this um, sure. the seven year newcomer? I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Um, when my comment about I felt there was no recourse, um, my um, use of that is because we have we have worked as as fellow directors with Director Smallman and sure. our and just a caution. Yeah, that was disclosing prior okay. session discussions. Um, we have we have. Um, this is we we have made efforts. That that's I guess all I can say. And then to to Mr. Ferris that um, I attended along with Director Smallman the CSDA training in Monterey this last uh, I believe it was May, and I attended a Fair Political Practices Commission um, session on conflict of interest. I um, attended a Brown Act and Public Records Act training session. Um, and both of those, I thought, and I um, attended a, a governance session on, on board policy and board conduct. And those are all issues that are very important currently and in the past year for our district. And Director Smallman did not attend those. And I was disappointed because I thought that would have been a really excellent opportunity to address specific issues. There were many concurrent <coughs> sessions, and I, he had different interests, but I thought as far as there, there was an opportunity, and I thought they were of specific interest to us in our current situation as a board. Um, but you know, we're all we're all equals. There, you know, we choose to attend the trainings that we find most relevant or most I most interesting. We separated those on purpose so that you would go to the. So we would try to cover all the different classes. So we, so we met to went. And so we are, you, are you done? Class. Okay, speaking, and I'll come to. Okay. okay, I can bring it to Bill then. Okay, right. if and, you want to. And then the other thing is, I and maybe this is more a question for our, our attorney rather than a comment on. Um, are we going to be are Are we going to respond to the questions about the the language, or is that something that you can help us with? Since there were some questions about the law and the Brown Act that were brought up you, during right. the oral communication. This is a tough area for me to address in a, in a public setting. Mm -hmm. um, the language in the draft complaint is very purposeful. Um, I um, believe it's all appropriate um, and has been carefully thought through. Um, I really do hesitate to go mm -hmm. much further than that because we're in the very awkward position of having a discussion yes. with our potential defendant. And then my my last question again to yours is is your analysis in this in the staff memorandum that's that is my uh, analysis on behalf of Nelson. Okay. Thank you. Um, before I go to okay, the other two directors here, I I want to second okay what Gina just said about what we can discuss tonight because I mean there are some people um, <laughs> who I wanted to inform about tonight's meeting and what the content was of the meeting and basically I said here read this okay so this is the public document that brings this um, uh, you know in, into the view of everybody and I'm one of the things when I first read this that I was most struck by is it's basically a general re readability so if you haven't read it um, you know, maybe it'll be, you know, if you haven't read any legal stuff, you know, maybe it is a little bit thick. But as legal documents go, Gina's done a really good job on this. Um, and some of the issue, some of the discussion about, you know, what the issues were are laid out here very carefully, like Section 17, for example, in this um, goes through that in a very clear manner. Um, so... I want to let Bill respond first, since he wanted to. Re okay. Um. Okay. Well, I, I wanted to include a story <laughs> that I didn't include in the beginning, because my my father was um, he served as an attorney for a special district, for two special districts. One was for the city of Marin City, which, if you're not familiar, is an African African American community that was created by. Eleanor Roosevelt to build ships, and it's in Marin County. It's mainly comprised of um, African American community, and they also served as an attorney. Thought I'd add a little bit of story here. I know everybody's here for a 
a meeting. But also for a um, city council in Terra Linda, more of affluent up north of San Rafael and Marin County, more of all white men. So he, he would go to all these meetings and basically the, um, the African American community followed the law flawlessly. I mean, they respected the law, their meetings were very tight, no tax, no political tax whatsoever, period. And their meetings went beautifully. The people served on the on the board, on that city council, to the you know they listened to the public, etc. Goes up to the meetings up in Terralinda, all white men, affluent men. They were getting in fist fights out in the parking lot. <laughs> and so that's why I felt my dad told me I was dumb for getting serving on a public water district board. Because sometimes there's these political attacks that are, are meaningless, and they literally waste your hard-earned money. So I'm here to say, let's, and I know this whole issue about Terry Vera has deeply divided this community. Let's just say no to this court injunction <coughs> against me. It's going to cost money, but it all adds up. We're, not, we're a small wall community, small water district. Let's just work together. I, that's, you know, Lois and I came from uh, Lompico. We ran it on the shoestring. We know, we we bring. I, I had no, I, I had no, dreaming of that. I thought that this, I would not face these issues, getting elected, and so I just want to make sure that, that we just end this division. I, and the other, th very important thing, about this disclosure about. Leaking close information. It's all due to this whole Vieira case. There, everybody, I believe, knows everything that's involved with that. So and you know that I'm against it. So you know, I mean, I know that people feel that I broke the law um, disclosing public information. It's not going to happen. A big part of this whole thing is so that I, this doesn't happen again. So that we can have the freedom to go back in the closed session without me disclosing things. There's nothing more. For, there's, there is absolutely nothing more for me to disclose. And so that's why, again, why I believe that this is entirely a waste of money. It, at, and, and believe me, you may sit, think, think there and say, "Oh, well, it's just fifteen thousand dollars there." It's da -da. It all adds up. And you know that I did vote for the rate increase, but we can discuss rate cutbacks, but we can't do that unless we, we decide to become more, much more fiscally responsible with our money, with our community, and that's what I would like to contribute as, and I'd like to continue on as your director on this water district. Thank you. Uh, first, I think I want to make it extremely clear. This has absolutely nothing to do with the Terry Vieira case. This has 100% to do with Brad Act violation in the closed session that stop us from doing our job on current legal matters and future legal matters and has hurt us in past legal matters that have cost everybody in this room more money. That is what this is about. Um, and about the concerns that we have of being able to do our jobs. Um, you can shake your head all you want, but I'll tell you, yes, it's exact, no, you can't. No, you can't. Um, and what I'm really concerned about is how to answer a couple of questions that are really legitimate, great questions coming from the audience, especially two gentlemen out here that I can't remember your name, sir. Bill. But I'm going to try to answer them as vaguely as possible <laughs> because I cannot be specific. And I want to be specific. A question was asked, why is this the only alternative? There are a multitude of other alternatives that are out there, but we've come up to this one. <coughs> so the fact that I know that there are a ton of other alternatives. Caution. Okay. Direction. We can begin. Um, <laughs> 
This is the tough part because we want to be as transparent as possible. And, and in a lot of ways we can't be. Um, we cannot provide the written documentation that's necessary to be able to back up where we're at today because we can't. Um, what we have done in transparency, through transparency, is to take something that didn't necessarily need to come to the public, out to the public, to let the public see what's happening. Okay, Doug? Yes. Okay. Cautious here. Um, that is because we want to be transparent and because we want, honestly, want to get people's buy in and, and, and their opinions on the direction that we're going. Um, and that's a big reason why we're here tonight. Um, um, and it is very difficult to sit up here not to be able to answer some very specific questions. Um, I will take an attempt just for a second um, on something that was brought up by Mrs. Henry um, and, and regarding the engineering committee just because I know I'm going to look at kind of words by saying it, but I'm, I'm going to talk to it for a minute. There was a multitude of conversation in public at those engineering committee meetings and trying to set the engineering committee meetings to try and work with Director Smallman within the confines of his work environment. Um, and I would say there was at least a half a dozen or more suggestions or ideas that were put out there on how to, how we could work with Mr. Smallman. Um, and I'll give you just a couple quick examples of, hey, is there a way that we can do a conference call? You don't necessarily have to be here. Can we do a video conference call? Can we do earlier in the morning? Can we do a little later in the afternoon before you pick up your daughter? There was an immense amount of conversation on trying to make that work. So it wasn't just set at a time so that one, um, and I know that there could be some controversy around that, but I am be trying to be as transparent. Those conversations happened. There wasn't anybody that pulled it in one specific time. Uh, and there was also a lot of conversation with that around uh, staff time, expenses around that. And so there was, all I'm trying to put up there is that there, it wasn't, there was an attempt and there was quite a bit of communication around that issue. It wasn't just a bulldog bullied into a plant. Uh, and it had to look me up. So, because that was to talk about, because it was completely, the dialogue took place in a public meeting. It took place with Mr. Smallman present. So, it was an attempt. And, and I wish that I could go further into answering some of those questions. You just can't. Is that correct? Yeah. All right. Hopefully I don't transgress because Gina can't kick me from here. <laughs> <laughs> so there were there were several comments from the audience that I that I want to speak to because I think that there's a misapprehension about how this board works. Unanimity is not important. We do not come to these meetings with a unanimous opinion. We don't come to a closed session with a unanimous opinion. We come with the information that we have learned from the board packet, from conversations with the district manager about the board packet information, and from our own research about the topics and the issues at hand. Many, many times we have come into board meetings, closed session or not, with very different opinions. Chuck has persuaded me to change my mind on many occasions. I think I've persuaded Eric to change his mind on maybe once. Um, <laughs> we, we all influence each other by bringing our thought and opinion and considered positions, and we make our best case with one another here in the public. And if we happen to be unanimous, that's great, but it's not necessary. And there is no one of us trying to compel or persuade the merits of the issue <coughs> compel our vote. Our dis deliberations as a board inform that position, inevitably. So if anybody thinks I'm strong-arming somebody behind the scenes, they <coughs> clearly don't know me that I have not enough time to do that. I work full-time. And wouldn't anyway, because I value the differing opinions and perspectives of my board colleagues. 
They shape and inform my opinion, and I am not inflexible. None of us should be inflexible. We need to listen to the public and one another and the information we get from the staff <coughs> and council that can inform our decisions. And I wanted to speak also to the issue of transparency. It looks like closed session is intended to not be transparent. What is it, it is intended to do is protect the, the few, very, very few kinds of communications that the board has that are around sensitive negotiations. Maybe it's real estate. Maybe it's a legal case. Maybe it's a personnel matter. But they're there to protect those sensitive negotiations, and they are then decided upon, and the decisions are disclosed to the public. That process is private to protect the district's interest, to protect ratepayers' money, to, re to protect the interests of this district. So if you feel as if we're not being transparent because Jean is kicking us under the table and saying, don't say anymore, it's because of that desire to follow the Brown Act and be protective and avoid risks. And someone asked, what have we done as a team to support and train Mr. Smallman according to the Brown Act? As a member of the audience pointed out, he had been previously on the Lompico board, and so in that capacity for a number of years, and now in this capacity, has to take, like we all do, ethics training. And part of that ethics training has a segment on Brown Act compliance, and in that section, there's a section on how you're supposed to treat closed session and confidential information. I know that each one of us, when we complete our ethics training, there is a certificate that we're given that you complete your test and the certificate is sent to your district and that is available for anybody who is interested to see if our certificates are posted. And I believe you can find that information through the district secretary. So do we document our conversations in closed session? No, we can't share them with you even if we did. But the ethics training is part of that, and there are, you know, there are classes and workshops that each of us can avail ourselves of, and we certainly encourage each other to make sure that we stay current on our ethics training. And I wanted to echo um, Director Hammer's point. For me, the issue isn't the Vieira case or any one of our particular opinions for or against it, good or bad or indifferent. The issue is not that particular case. The issue is, is, the, is that framework of a closed session a private and confidential space where each of us can feel free to, to voice our contrarian opinions, our, our strongly held beliefs and opinions, our, you know, bring every bit of decision making, vetting, to bear in that moment without fear that confidences will be breached, without the risk of confidential information being disclosed. I want to make sure that that sanctity is preserved and that we follow the Brown Act, we follow the law, and that we respect each other's differing opinions in that closed and private session. That's it. I have one very simple comment. Um, we were asked one question here, which says, was, did we pressure Bill in closed session? That's exactly the sort of question we cannot answer tonight. So, um, and that's unfortunate. Um, that, anyway. Um, but, um, as, but another, but the other point that was brought up was by the gentleman over here on the right, uh, Bill, who says, is this our own, ask the question, is this our only recourse? And um, I hope not. I hope there's some way we can get to a point where we have the assurances that the sensitive matters that we have to discuss can be discussed and only as much of it okay, brought out of closed session as the entire board decides is appropriate. But, um, but, I, but there's two quotes that 
Director Smallman said tonight, okay, that troubled me. One was, I have done nothing wrong. And that, um, given that to reveal closed session discussion is illegal, I guess that falls within my um, general uh, tent of being wrong, and I think indicates a lack of responsibility for, uh, for what he uh, has talked about. And another of those comments is, there is nothing more for me to disclose. And when I hear that, um, that's, you know, maybe there isn't now, maybe there is. Okay, but there will be times in the future in which there will be sensitive matters <laughs> that are being discussed and we will disagree. Um, and we'll end up needing to take a vote at some point, probably in that process, and whether it's, okay, unanimous four to one or three to two, um, that isn't, uh, that will have to be determined, and I have no, and I don't believe the other directors have any resentment over anybody voting, okay, contrary to what our desires are. I hope to have a discussion getting to that point where um, the different, different opinions have been bought, brought respectfully, intelligently, informed opinions, but when the, they're done, um, I respect the okay, uh, dissent and I believe everybody else does in that manner. So um, for me, this evening is about how to proceed. And we're, I, you know, I'm getting to the point here, I'm gonna ask for another, okay, for further input from the public about what we have talked about. I'll do it in just a second. Okay, I'll, it won't take very long. Um, and then, um, and then we'll come back and see if we can get um, a, a path in front of us. Uh, so, um, I, I gentlemen in the front, and then I'll come back to you. Okay. Okay, Mr. Kennedy. Uh, brief question about what is um, and is not allowed to be conveyed from um, uh, private session. Um, what does Mr. Brown Act um, require that every word that's spoken? in the closed session be retained within that session? Or are there some items that can be disclosed? Um, I've read recently, as many have probably, that some things can be discussed, some things cannot. If that's the case, then it becomes like, how do we decide, how do you decide on the fly in the meeting what can or cannot be discussed afterward? And then afterward, if there's a disagreement, if Bill Smallman or somebody else says something, then maybe they can say, well, as far as I can tell, that was disclosable. And that this is this is constantly a matter of adjudication, or am I am I way off here? Is is everything required to be um, confidential or is, are some things not? Do you know the answer to that? Well, I'm probably gonna refer maybe in this session if could, could I get an idea how many people maybe want to come back and ask something again to see? Um, okay. Um, the reason I was asking that is that I want to, um, you know, maybe take a question, um, you know, as it comes up. Um, how do we feel about, I mean, Gina, for example, would you want to at some point either now or at the, okay, the later uh, discuss? I, I am willing and prepared to answer any question that the board chooses to refer to me in the course of this discussion. Um, I may have to defer or limit my answer on some topics if I think it's going to reveal specific legal strategy or go too far into the analysis of a certain item, but um, I will do my best at the board's and request to respond to uh, specific questions. Okay, so I'd like to exercise a little discretion here, and if you could answer this, I think he's asked this very well, um, and uh, worded it very well, so. Okay. The Brown Act is very specific as to what's allowed and what isn't, and it's the, the exact provisions that govern what cannot be repeated out of a closed session 
are copied in the board memo um, that you may or may not have a copy of in this session, but in general terms, um, it's confidential information that can't be repeated, so it does have to have some confidentiality, but overall there's a presumption of confidentiality for anything that was discussed in closed session, if that's its source. But then, secondly, whatever limited exceptions there are from those protections are solely for the very limited and specific purpose of, discuss of providing the nature of any illegality or wrongdoing. And they're very narrow in that regard. So it's not much. It's not much. And it has to be considered to be illegal by the, the, um, the person who's... Well, it's not just out. by the person who's speaking. It's more of an objective standard. Right, but I mean, that has to be the first rationale for the person who takes it outside of the session. Yes, it has to be illegal or potentially illegal, and the disclosure has to be carefully limited so that it is no more than exactly what would demonstrate the extent and nature of the illegality. Okay. So, Mr. Smallmore, what happened that his disclosures were based on his observations that what was discussed was illegal in order for him to be clean in this case. Does that make sense? Or, Don't no? go further than is comfortable, but okay. I think that's a, that's a fair summary in okay. general terms. I'm just trying to understand what the thinking is of Mr. Smallman and everybody else here as to what happened and why it was considered to be okay and, and right, in fact, and imperative that it be disclosed by Mr. Smallman and why everyone else is, you know, that should not have been disclosed. And it seems to me that it must come down to that issue of legality and that the, the, the conversation, conversation itself was illegal or the matters being discussed were illegal. There's some issue of legality that um, made it right for Mr. Smallman to take it outside of the closed session. Is that, um, whether, or not, whether or not he's right is another matter. You know, whether he's right, I think, okay, is Yeah, I mean, my opinion question. is set forth in the board memo that there is no basis in the Brown Act for the specific disclosures to the ones in the complaint. My, my professional opinion that there is no exception in the Brown Act that permits the specific disclosures that are outlined in the complaint is set forth in the memo that's in front of the public and the board tonight. But you did say there's an exception if it's, if it's an illegal act that's observed in the, in the meeting, is that what you're saying? No. Um, I think, I think she, she's answered, okay, it's, it's very delicate, okay, without talking about closed session to say this, and if you listen carefully, um, I think you'll hear the, I think you understand, I guess is what I'm saying. And I think if you read the memo, she's saying you get, the board, you get the answer as well. Right, she's saying, she's right, I, I get that, but I'm just saying that, okay. that would make it okay. In other words, if I'm in a meeting, Somewhere else, for the right to other people. And I, 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 I love, you're a great person to have a discussion with on this. I think I need, there's a lot of people who need to talk. Okay. Thank you. You've done a good, very good job of bringing one of the cruxes okay, um, to us. So I saw a person in the back row first. I'll, I'll find, find you. I, okay. Um, I think a lot of the frustration is that things have come to um, a legal action or, or potential legal action. Um, it seems like in the policy manual there should be some way of handling this, of like first step, second step, third step before you get to legal counsel. Um, and whether these things have happened in closed session or not, you can't talk about it, I understand, but it seems like there should be an outline, and so all directors understand what's expected of them, and not saying Mr. Smallman did something egregious, but something terrible, and really undermine the ability of the board to act, there should be a way to handle that procedurally. So it's, it's you know, cut and dry, black and white, everybody understands. So to get it to the point where we have to go to council seems... Know, are we using a bazooka for a set of a fly swatter? Yeah. Um, Wallace. First of all, I would like to say 
Like Superman, I believe in truth, justice, and the American way. <laughs> and Juan Pico was thrilled to death to be part of SLV. We worked hard. We went through hell to get here. But since we've been here, we haven't been too thrilled because there's, we thought we had an agreement, okay? But that has nothing to do with this. Just so you know, I didn't, I, I'm not a big whiner sniveler. There's a great picture of me with, with Rick there with his head chopped off. And another Long Pico board member because, hey, we passed it and we're thrilled. Anyway, I, th I think that Bill Smallman had no idea what he was getting into when he got here. I really don't think he realized. He just... He has this focus, <coughs> fix the infrastructure, fix the infrastructure. That's his focus, that's what he talks about. And he doesn't just mean for Juan Pico, he means for the whole district. And I'm sorry to see him be treated this way. And I agree with this fellow, who's, or Ruth, who said, there has to be a better way to deal with this. Why are you giving him such a slap? And is it even legal what you're doing? I don't know. But to be, to have in the past said you had to support a board member because he was an employee and you're worried about rich people running for the board if you didn't support him, what are you doing here? I, I just don't get it. I don't know how many times I come to meetings and say, I really don't get it. I guess I'm just a dope. Mr. Schmeider. I first of all wanted to ask a quick question. The gentleman here in the green hat asked a question and got answers from you. Can I have that same privilege, please? He uh, got an answer from your please attorney, ask and I'd like to ask your attorney a question. Or ask you a question. Well, ask us, and we'll, okay. we'll, we'll try to. So I know that handle things. That right? uh, it's been said tonight that the Vieira thing, that this isn't what this is all about, and I get that. But uh, but it is a major part of what this is about, uh, at least in my mind. And uh, the release of that letter. I mean, I quote. I, I cited the the code that talks about in California that if someone threatens legal action against a public entity that that is public information and needs to be disclosed. I would like to know why that letter is not being disclosed to the public. I would like to know the legal rationing why that threat of litigation, which is according to the code that I read, meant to be public information, why that is not being disclosed. You can't just say it's confidential. I want to know the law. I, I think I could say something, but you'd probably say it better. Okay. Um. Well, um, we recently received another request for that very document from an, an attorney for Mr. Holloway and responded in, I think, as much detail as the district ever has to that particular request. Um, so that response is available if anybody wants to see it. That response is available to the public? Where, where would we where find, would it? find it? Make a public records act request, and you'd be supplied. I think like, there's no reason otherwise. Um, Is it on your website? It hasn't been. Anyway, I I don't want to talk more about it, but um, it is a public document. Okay. Somebody requested. Somebody requested it. Okay. Um, well, that doesn't mean it's a public document. Did they, re did they receive no, the, it? The, I, I suppose what I mean to say is that if somebody requests it, it is a public record that could be disclosed to them. The answer is yes. I, I request the document, then, okay. I'd like it doesn't have the document, please. I think you just did. Okay. Um, and the other thing, I, catch me quickly in this. You ask a question that had an if in it. 
Okay, and you said if this, then this? Because I'm not an attorney, I just... No, I'm just saying that it, when you ask that question, you know, the answer might be that the if was not fulfilled. Oh, I, I get that. Okay. Bob, do we have a method of providing it to the gentleman who requested it? Yes, thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, when he had requested writing through a public records request? Verbal request. I'm requesting it here. No, it was just a, it was a it was a qualified question right, from just staff to yeah. staff, so okay. and I didn't answer that. So. Holly has my email. We exchanged emails today. Great. Okay. Um, sir, Mr. Frack. Um, Ed Frack, Long Pico, and San Rosa Valley. My question is: This thing happened in your report here on August the fourth. In the Valley Press, in September first uh, or third or something like that, something again in the Valley Press. That was five months ago. When the first thing happened, August fourth, you had a closed session. After that, was it ever brought up by your attorney who was new at the job at that time? And by the way, the district's attorney is responsible for the training of the board, or at least keeping them informed them all the laws concerning Brown Act or closed session or whatever. Was that brought up to Mr. Smallman and the entire board at the same time? In other words, you have a little leak. It gets a little larger pretty soon as a flood. And that's what's happening here. You let the September, the August 4th thing happen, then the September 1st, and then after that there's some information and belief, like you believe in Santa Claus, that there was some public, some social media done, which you don't have any evidence of. Why wasn't this caught at the beginning stages and addressed at that time and not come to this extent that you are doing right now? I feel this is completely, you need to take care of things when they start happening. It's like I was road manager for 30 years on a road and we had a little hole, pothole, you could fix it in two minutes. But people kept driving over and kept driving over it, no one fixed it, no one fixed it. Pretty soon you have an hour job. Pretty soon it'd be two hours job or a thousand dollars. It just it, it gets away from you. Attack it when it's early and you all can talk to each other. You evidently do. <laughs> Why didn't you talk to Bill and say, was it ever said you know, you got to cut this out. This is harming us. Was that a question or a statement? It was um, question and statement. Okay, is it a question? Okay. Well, I, you know, the one thing I, I want to say, Mr. <laughs> Hammer, every time I ask a question or, or make a statement, you always rebut it where I can't rebut your statement. So I, oh. I, well, I really don't want to have you answer anything. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm going to be the one that negotiates this. Okay, and... Okay, um, let's, let's both, okay. Um, we do ethics training. When is the... That's not ethics. Well, Brown Act is... Did you, uh, he made a mistake. You, you felt he made a mistake. You knew about it almost immediately because you read the Valley Press and the different manager I know is definitely in touch with it. Did you then talk to him about it? Um, can you speak to that point? I can't speak to it. Yeah, I don't think we can. So, sorry. There were, there were multiple closed session meetings. Can we answer? It's actually really better. Can't, question we really question can't go down this road unless the board makes a Take decision, decision to, to close to all of the background. Good idea. Yeah, hello. Good idea. Um, after we take, well, what we do afterwards, we'll think about. Okay, but let's get through public discussion on this right now so we have all your input before we go to that discussion. Lewis, I think I... Okay. No, you, you said exactly what I was going to Could we please get back to the public comment oh, okay. so we can finish that and then continue? Okay. Because it's back and forth. It's going to take yeah. too long. Um, Bob Fultz and then yourself, Mr. Hoffman. I'm Bob Fultz, Boulder Creek. So um, I'm guessing from the... I mean, People who know me know I'm a bit of a skeptic when, when statements are made about things that are 
representative's facts, but really are like opinions. I mean, there's a famous guy who said, you're entitled to your own opinion, but not to your own facts. So I, I'm, I'm guessing from the non-response to the questions I had about the other allegations that were, I believe, purported to show a pattern of behavior, and since there hasn't been an answer on that, that there's probably not going to be one forthcoming. And so, you know, while I'm not really sure where to come down on this, I, I, I kind of take that as the trust me. That's kind of hard to do, right? I mean, because this is something that is so politically charged. Forget the legal part of it, which is big enough as well. This is a political thing. And so Mr. Smallman's name is going to be associated with Brown Act violation, even though there are others up there that have that, have that same association, maybe inadvertently, but, but whatever. <laughs> and so there's a political aspect of this as well. So is the court hearing going to be, hey, four people get up there and say, trust me, and the judge is going to go, yeah? I mean, preliminary injunctions, you can get pretty much routinely. I mean, every judge pretty much hands those out just because the downside of not granting one is larger than the upside of that. Is that what that's going to be like? I mean, is that what Mr. Smallman's going to go through? Is people just going to go up there and say, hey, yeah, he did something, therefore you got to trust me in this? Look, if, if someone says it's not about the money, it's always about the money. If it works, if it, if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck and looks like a duck, it's a duck. So what are we going to do here? Are you, are you guys really going to take this to a court and say, trust me, or is this just the opening shot of a negotiation that you guys want to have a team thing? I mean, I get the team and all this dissent and all that, but when I hear Director Hammer say to Mr. Smallman, you'll never get a second while I'm on the board, that's not teamwork inducing. That is not only disrespectful of a fellow board member, but also disrespectful to every single voter that voted for Mr. Smallman. And so again, I come back to this. What are we doing here? And are you really going to just get up there and say, trust us, um, he did all these bad things and he needs to be punished and he needs to pay us money? I think there needs to be a little bit more than that. I hear, though, it's not going to be forthcoming, so I'm kind of left in this quandary of trust you. It's hard. Okay. okay, just a second. I just want to, okay, and this gentleman, but then I'll come to you. Um, for the pattern of, I read the, doc, read the draft version of this, the pattern is, but th this is not you a. You have two very specific examples, okay. and everything else is belief and innuendo okay. and hearsay. So be specific. Going forth. I may not be able to respond with brief information on Bill. Uh, well, I think I have to follow Bob because uh, I'm confused, actually. Uh, I don't understand. We were talking about a Vieira letter, and that's all That's all the public knows is that there's some letter. And what's the, you know, there's a lot of uh, talk about what, what that letter contained. You know, is it something that the board doesn't want everyone to know because it's incriminating? something like that but it seems like there's a lot more to this than we can be told so I don't understand if this is just about a letter and he wasn't supposed to say there's a letter uh, why why does this have to go this far why can't we you know I, a little bit more about my background I have a science background I was a headmaster of a private school for 14 years you know and when we took care of disciplinary problems we said Bill don't do that anymore and then, you know, Bill won't do it anymore. So I guess this yeah. hasn't worked or something, but we have, the public doesn't see any other disclosures or secret information other than there's some mysterious letter. We've never seen anything. So what is it that's been disclosed that's so bad? What the public is going to think is that this is some sort of railroad problem on Bill Smallman because he's a dissenter. He votes against what you say. Okay, well, you can explain that. You know, it's okay to not have the same opinion as everyone else, but it's still going to be public perception. I don't know how you're going to educate those 8,000 ratepayers out there. You know, I've talked to a lot of them. I'm, a, I'm also a proud member of the, the San Lorenzo Valley Water District protest group. I, I did step up on the second rate increase. But, just so you know, I'm not against rate increases anymore. I know that you've got infrastructure problems. I am against what Bill Smallman is against, and that is a, 
the relentless spending of money for lawsuits and, and other things. What we see is that you're hiring public relations people. You're hiring attorneys from Los Angeles. We have to pay for their staying here, flying here. There's a lot of expenses. I saw that you had, I think, $10 million in reserve money three years ago. It's gone. I, I might be wrong, but this is, these are things that are showing up. I've looked at your budgets. I know that you, you, know, you have 34 employees now. Your reserves ran out last year. You hired nine more employees. You had 25, you had more. Why? What are they doing? Everything I see you guys do here is, okay, we gotta get this done. Let's go out to contract and have somebody do it. Doesn't anyone here do this work? Uh, it's, we don't understand. The public needs to know more about what you're doing, actually, about this infrastructure, because I don't see much happening. You know, we had a fish ladder or something going in, but there were funds for that coming from other places, from what I understand. So there's a lot of confusion going on, and we don't want to see this kind of thing happening to a person that we feel represents us. I don't feel like this board represents the ratepayers. We feel like we've been shut out, that there are things that you do so that we don't get information, we can't find these tapes, we can't find minutes, secret recordings that get erased. And then I found out recently, apparently, it's okay for you to do that. Maybe I'm wrong, but this is the kind of information we get as the public. So what's the truth? What needs to be done, I think, is that we need to forget about this injunction and try something else, even though there is no other recourse. Thank you. Thank you. Um, sir. Uh, I wanted to speak at least a little bit to the whole trust and the statement. Apparently, Eric doesn't get to answer the question because he's Eric, I guess, <laughs> it seems like. But I would just like people to think logically. I, and, this, and I'm not even saying pro or con about the board going up to the <coughs> junction, which seems like a pretty drastic thing. It seems like it's going to cost a lot of money. And at the very least, I guess I would hope that you guys can work something out so it doesn't happen. But that's not to say that I think that you just decided to do this. Does anybody seriously think that nobody talked to him before and said, hey, you can't do this multiple times? I mean, that just defies all logic. So that's not to say who's right and wrong in this. It's just to say have a little bit, the people who are so pro Bill Smallman, to see a little bit of, I listen to these people and they at least they sound to me like they're trying to be reasonable. And so I tend to think that they have tried pretty hard to work things out with Bill. And, and I also found <laughs> the last comment that he made about, well, I don't have anything more left to disclose, kind of ominous. I mean, <laughs> it's like, what's that saying? I've disclosed everything, whether I should have or not, and now I'm done, but how would you feel about that going forward? I mean, just logically, how would you feel about that going forward? Anyway, that's all I have to say. Okay. Um, thank you, Deborah. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking back to Bob Fulton's remark on what is the outcome that you want out of this? And I had thought about what's a good outcome I think it's going to be release of the Vieira letter, but I don't see any other advantage to any of us here of you proceeding, except to know what's in that letter, and I know you say that's not what this is about, but it is certainly the heart of this, and it is mentioned in the claim, so it is part of it. I'm a little concerned because there's been contradictory statements, and I'm also with Ruth. If we weren't supposed to know about the letter, why did Jean Radcliffe tell us about it? What she told us about it is now in contradiction to what the attorney is alluding, is what is, who is addressed to, what is the content of the letter. So now I'm really confused, and I think if you proceed, that is some one can of worms I think you're going to be opening up, is you're going to have to come to some conclusion. Were members of the public told incorrect information because you didn't want to reveal what was really in the letter? And I think that's a valid point. 
I'm also concerned that you might be considering going back to a superior court where you told a judge that you believed that he made an incorrect judgment, and not only once but twice you took it back to him. And going back into that kind of an environment, the district's reputation is on the line. I think you're going to have to address serial meetings because there was a Facebook post by one of the directors well over a month ahead before this ap appeared on a closed session item saying that you were going after Bill Smallman. <coughs> Um, I believe continuing all of this, what results you're going to get is a ratepayer revolt. That's bad news for you, but that's good news for us. Yeah. Mr. Smallman strong, got very strong support in the November 2016 election, and he maintains that support. That's what you're going to be going up against. I agree with all the people that say there's a great deal of ratepayer distrust, and I think a lot of it has total basis, one of the main points being waste of funds, and I think continuing this kind of thing in this kind of way is only proving to all of us that you are really out of control, and I really urge you to just stop tonight and drop it. Thank you. Mr. Schneider. One last comment. I wanted to comment that when Bill said he had nothing more to disclose, what Bill was talking about was illegal activity to disclose. What Bill was talking about was the fact that this board in closed session has kept a document which is legally to be available to the public. That this board has kept that document closed to the public. And Bill reported illegal activity going on in that session. And by the way, one of the things in this, in this injunction is disclosing the letter, which you just said is public. It should be public. Uh, Mr. So Hall. Bill reported the illegal activity of this board keeping public information away from the public. Um, Thank you. Mr. Holloway. And he had nothing more to report on that. Mr. Holloway. Um, there's, uh, there's more ways to violate the Brown Act than revealing confidential information. And uh, this, uh, this board, this district, has been violating the Brown Act for years. Um, uh, let me begin uh, in 2012. Uh, Margaret Bruce was uh, appointed to the board in uh, June or July of 2012. I went to the uh, first environmental committee meeting after she was appointed to the board. She was not on the committee, but she came to the committee meeting and she participated. I raised my hand. I said, it's a Brown Act violation to have three board members participate in a committee meeting. It's a majority of the board. And Larry Prather was the chair of the environmental committee. He told me I could sue the district if I didn't like it. And Margaret Bruce continued to participate in uh, that committee meeting in 2012. So this was a topic of the grand jury report in 2014. Um, in 2014, I went to a meeting of the uh, Valley Women's Club Environmental Committee meeting. Nancy Macy is the chair, has been the chair of the Valley Women's Club Environmental Committee for many years. Um, I heard her after the meeting talk to someone, and she expressed with great authority what the status of the negotiations with District Manager Jim Mueller were in 2014. All of us had observed uh, about six different closed sessions evaluating Jim Mueller's performance uh, approaching June of 2014. And uh, this was at this time. Nancy Macy uh, said that uh, his contract was going to be extended by 18 months. From my point of view, I knew that Mr. Mueller's contract ended on June 30th, and it was extended year by year. The 18 months, that was a whole new thing. That was the only time I ever heard about an 18-month extension. Uh, but it came out of Nancy, and she spoke with great authority. I thought maybe she got the leak from Larry Prater. Maybe she got the leak from Margaret Bruce. I'm not sure. Um, on my phone here, uh, somebody left me a voicemail in 2016. Uh, they ran into Margaret Bruce at Jazz Sue's. Margaret Bruce, it's two minutes. You know, I'm not going to play it for you, but it's a two-minute uh, voicemail where Margaret Bruce gives him the rundown of uh, the status of my case, the status of the Debert case. This was in uh, 2016. Um, so anybody can subpoena this voicemail if you want to hear it. Um, after the last regular board meeting on the 18th, um, I was walking out of the meeting. Director Hammer, Vice President Hammer, intercepted me. I was trying to talk to a woman named Barbara, 
And in the end, uh, she said, uh, call me tomorrow because Vice President Hammer needed to talk to me. So she went off and he had his thing to say to me. Um, what Director Hammer told me about was what happened in uh, closed session. He said that, uh, that, they, that the board discussed the three minute gap uh, on the 18th and that Brian and Chuck were tight. They were solid. So, um, you know, I, if you want to get an injunction against Director Smallman, why don't you get a direct, or injunction against Vice President Hammer? Did you, you had your hand. You. Okay. Um, anybody else? Um, Barbara. Um, Barbara Hanson, uh, Felton. The most disturbing thing I've heard tonight is Bill, you said, I don't think I did anything wrong. And if whatever they said to you didn't get through, that not to continue, this may be the club that gets the job done. Or maybe you could self-reflect and figure out what was wrong and then apologize and move forward. That would just make life so much easier. And then know going forward what not to disclose. I'm on boards too. <laughs> we all need to learn how to do this stuff or I don't know who's going to take over. Uh, thank you for your service, though. Um, I think I saw Mr. Lee have his hand up. <coughs> Hi, Mark Lee again from Ben Lohman. Um, I want to reiterate again, we are heading down the wrong path. This is not a <coughs> action you want to take. It has political consequences, and it's, it's wrong. There have been Brown Act violations by every one of these people on the board. We've been here watching the board for what? The last eight years, we haven't said anything about this. We let it go. I mean, this is a terrible decision. Regarding the Vieira letter, we still have not gotten a decision why it should not be made a public record. Everyone knew about the Terry Vieira letter. And it was published in the press banner. Everyone knew that what was going on there. It was in the Superior Court documents which, of course, we are a law. This whole thing originated with a bad mistake by the board of trying to defend Terry Vieira. Okay, so getting off that subject, let's get back to Bill. He's, been, he's just been elected to the board. He's very experienced, he's a good engineer. To drag him through a court hearing is just gonna be throwing mud on yourselves. It's gonna be a backlash. I, I can't believe that you're at, we're actually having a public hearing on this wasting our time and wasting taxpayers' money. I want you to think clearly on what your, what your decision is tonight. Go back home, think about this. We've already learned our lessons in the recent litigation, which has been a waste of time. And the appeal process is even a further waste of taxpayers' money. This has nothing to do with Ben Lowen versus Felton, though I appreciate the Kabuki Theater of the cheerleaders from Felton, and I understand where they're coming from. But it's important to do the right thing. This is a waste of time. There was information that was disclosed. It was public. It was already out there. Don't punish a hardworking director. It's ridiculous. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Sir. John Fasoles from Felton. Uh, yeah, I would, I would really like to see the board get together with Bill, and, and I'd love to see Bill decide that he's going to work within the, the, the rules and regulations of the board, especially when it comes to closed session. It would be really good to see all of this lead to us having a better structure when it comes to our closed meetings, so that any of these slip-ups can't occur, because everyone is... is on pins and needles about it. Let's all behave as best we can. I would like to see them not, this injunction not take place. I, I don't see that it's going to produce anything valuable that can't be done with a handshake and a few people deciding, really deciding, that they're going to follow all the 
closed session rules and regulations. Anybody else? I don't. Oh. Um. Yeah, so, if somebody on the board. I'm sorry, would you identify yourself? Oh, uh, Kim Bach, Boulder Creek. If somebody on the board feels that other people on the board are doing something that's not legal, what is the proper legal channel for them to report that rather than blurting it in the newspaper? Is there one? Um, I think I can ask. Okay. Gina, the yes, there, um, the Brown Act provides for certain remedies, um, including reporting it to the DA or the grand jury. I'm wondering if that is done or if you can tell us that. Can I interrupt? E1 is what she said, no, but E2, E2 is the uh, newspaper. Like, what would be the proper way to go about this so that it didn't cause this mess? I don't. Okay, discussion at this point on this. Well, this is one of the proper ways to go about it. But for so so, if somebody wanted to, if somebody on the board wanted to disclose something they felt might be illegal, the proper thing to do was to put it in the newspaper. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So is this done? I mean, I mean, if the problem is that things were not done through the correct channels, and that's why we're all here tonight, I was just wondering if things did go through the proper channels as well, or is that all still up well, in the air? Yeah. My my understanding is that uh, us are our our that's actually the purpose of the grand jury. So we're we're allowed to say anything to the grand jury, um, which which I another reason why I can almost guarantee. Bill, just a caution about talking to anything you might about anything you might have said to the grand jury. Well, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that I, I moving moving forward that perhaps. I, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry that people feel that it was bad to the, you know, perception of things to the press. But and when I should have acknowledged that as directors, we we are allowed by law to let the grand jury know every everything and anything it could, because they keep it confidential, and that's what moving forward. That's that should be. Um, what what I will personally do. I don't foresee having anything to do, but anyway, I just wanted to I want to clarify that um, that we can that would be that would be the be the better course of action if there was something that I felt as a director was it happening illegal. Well, just go to the, you know. So you're saying I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm legally I'm I'm legally I'm legal obligated to con you know, to send my Complaints or whatever to and I'm free to do so legally to the grand jury, right? Just a clarification. Right. Right. There's no obligation to do so. You do have the right under the Brown Act to bring to the grand jury's attention matters that are illegal or potentially illegal and to disclose only as much information as it's absolutely necessary in order okay. to alert them to the nature of the illegality. So it's not a blank right. check to disclose any confidential information to the grand jury, but you you do have the right under the Brown Act to make a narrow disclosure just to the extent of the illegality. Uh, okay, right. Pretty good answer if you ask me. Okay, Bill Hoffman. <coughs> yes, Bill Hoffman, Bill Lonely. I'd just like to quote from San Lorenzo Valley Water District protest team scripture. Let he who is without Brown Act violation cast the first injunction. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, I'm not keeping real good trust. Thank you. Good. Um, okay. <clears throat> good quote. Um, anybody else? Okay. Um, Want to comment before we come back to the board for discussion? I don't see any. So I'm going to close out our second round of uh, public input and bring it back to the board for 
responses or suggestions or um, what do we want to do? My suggestion would be that we take the information that we have and then we can be in our next closed session and continue dialogue on uh, the direction we want to go since it is a legal matter. And we can't hear you. Since yeah. it is a legal matter, I feel that we should take, take this and take the information that we've heard tonight from the public, take it back and bring it back on the next closed session agenda item uh, for further discussion uh, with legal counsel in the direction that we as a board want to go. Okay. That would be my... What do we think? I think we are weighing... Taking this course of action... If we take the course of action to file the injunction, it's a cost, it's a distraction, mm -hmm. Hello. it utilizes our district council's time and resources in ways that, you know, there's always opportunity costs. And against the other side of, there are risks and exposures if we don't address this. Future implications to how the board conducts its business as a group that I, I want to feel assured the risks about those future exposures are put in balance. And, and, and I think it's really important to say this has, we must conduct ourselves, all of us, we must conduct ourselves with accountability and, and in, ad, you know, clear adherence to legal counsel's advice and the So I, I agree with Eric. I'd like to take it back for um, some gnarly discussion. And I just sort of want to make a general comment. Um, I, I'm gathering from a comment this evening that not everybody has had an opportunity to read the agenda item. Um, it is posted on the website. And... Um, because it's got a lot of detail in it, I think it's useful for people to know that they can go there and read the full mem memorandum and the proposed legal language. Um, because I think it's, without having it in front of you, perhaps it's a little hard to observe the details, but it is posted on the website, and I would recommend that everybody have a close look at that, because I, I think that would be also very useful. Oh, I like to do what somebody did in my dad's courtroom uh, 30 years ago. Hello, oh, Scotty, it's Captain Kirk. Uh, please beam me up, hostile planet. Immediately. I'm in trouble. <laughs> True story. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, um, yeah. I, I would also like to take a moment to set the record straight. When I was first appointed, I did attend an environmental committee meeting. And I was admonished by counsel, and I was also admonished by the chair of the committee to not participate. Being newly appointed, I was not, I was like within days of my appointment, I was not fully acquainted with the expectations of the Brown Act. That never occurred again, and that's the difference. Okay. Okay. I I think it is good for us to have this discussion again, and they've had two suggestions. Um, After closed session, <laughs> we'll discuss in that, that could be an act that could be a course that we decide in closed session to do. So, um, so I've heard two suggestions. Um, we don't usually agendize in this, but I think it would not be improper to do so, is to say, um, to, to hear sort of a motion there that we, you, um, uh, I, we don't need a motion I for, need a motion. We just, there's no motion. There's no so. action out of necessary. I think it would just be to take a, to, to properly agendize this. Properly agendize, agendize it, and then this thing would be closed if there's no further action, right? Right. I, pardon? Well, yes, absolutely. Just a, a comment that the reason why the safe harbor language of the Brown Act provides for anonymity in um, terms of how the matter is described on the closed session agenda is to protect um, 
the district from having the nature of the matter become known before an action, for example, is filed. Here, because the nature of the matter has already been made public, it could be clearly stated on the closed session agenda what the matter is, and therefore if the public wishes to comment prior to that discussion, they would have an opportunity. They would know it was being so right, I think that'd be very good, rather than having okay initialization of okay litigation or whatever the wording was initially when we did not know that we would be coming. Okay. I'd just like to add one final thing because I didn't, you know, I'd like to address what Barbara. Con I do take this seriously, and you know, I feel that 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 it does is very harmful on certain confidential information and you know I mean I, I hope you understand the reasons why um, I did this but I, I mean I, I want to sincerely say that um, you know I definitely uh, do take this matter very seriously and I, I don't want to see it happen again I, I, I basically want us to move forward as a water district in the community okay. we make a motion to adjourn. Um, yes if I don't hear any protests from anybody okay um, we are adjourned at 810. <coughs> 8 oh, okay, 807. <laughs>